Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and today we're going to be talking about a piece of equipment that'll revolutionize the way that you frame your images, the Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator. If you're leaning towards picking out an automatic rotator over its manual counterpart, then this just might be the rotator for you. I've been using this rotator for some time now, and with hundreds of hours of it riding along with my Skywatcher 200P, I thought I'd do a quick review for you so you have some information to go off of. This hardware not only gives you complete control over your framing, but it's also a step towards complete automation of your imaging session and maintains an incredible degree of accuracy, bringing consistency into the equation, which is absolutely necessary to achieve those optimal final image results that you're after. And even though you can achieve high levels of accuracy with the manual counterpart when using software like Nina, you still have the human factor to consider, which requires time through trial and error as you dial in your rotational angle based off of the tolerance that you have set. And a way around that is to expand that tolerance a little bit, which now takes consistency out of the equation. The Falcon Rotator brings speed and accuracy together, optimizing your already limited time under the stars. One of the Falcon Rotator's standout features is its precision. This piece of hardware not only looks sharp, but also has pinpoint accuracy. And with its ability to make micro adjustments, you can align your shots with unparalleled accuracy, capturing the night sky in all its glory. The framing possibilities are endless, leaving your vision limitless. But it's not just about precision. The Falcon Rotator is built for convenience. Its lightweight design and compatibility with a wide range of telescope and camera combinations make it easy to fit into your imaging train. With the first version having a back focus consumption of 19mm and the second version having a mere 15.2mm of back focus consumption, you are sure to be able to maintain the critical back focus requirements of your telescope. And if you need help with back focus, be sure to check out my two tutorials, which I'll have links for in the description of this video. The Falcon Rotator is also extremely easy to set up and run. With just one item to download from the Pegasus Astro website, coupled with ASCOM, you can immediately connect and operate your rotator from your computer. And the software also seamlessly connects to Nina giving you full control and automation when it comes to framing your image, giving you the advantage of imaging multiple targets in one night with different framing orientations without ever needing to interfere manually to adjust rotation. Simply choose your framing parameters and either click slew, center, and rotate within the framing wizard or send your framing from the wizard to an imaging sequence and enable rotate. Once you click play in Nina sequence tab, Nina will automatically operate your rotator. And if you need help getting your Falcon rotator set up and connected to Nina, as well as use it in Nina's framing wizard, be sure to check out my tutorials, which I'll have links for in the description of this video. One thing to consider is this rotator does require a power source the first version, like I have here, requires a separate 12 volt power source, which I overcame by tying into my camera power supply. The second version of the Falcon Rotator gets its power through the USB cable. Both versions of the Rotator do require a USB port to be available, so make sure to consider that when you're choosing this Rotator. I simply have a USB hub tied into my focuser assembly in order to accommodate multiple accessories that need USB connections. If you consider the second version of the Falcon Rotator, it operates on a USB 2.0 cable hub side to a USB-C cable rotator side. And you'll need to consider with the second version of the Falcon Rotator, you'll need a powered USB hub or port to operate it. If you need any assistance with cable management, please refer to my video, which I'll have a link for in the description of this video. And I go over how I tied my rotator power source into my camera power supply, as well as how I have my USB hub set up. 
And here is the imaging train with the rotator included. Everything from the coma corrector to the rotator, the filter drawer, and the camera. And this example right here is exactly 55 millimeters of back focus because the coma corrector requires 55 millimeters. And if you weren't using a coma corrector, you would just simply install the adapter that the rotator comes with in place of the coma corrector. And whichever way you have it, you would just then take it and slide the assembly into the focuser assembly of your telescope. And if I were using the second version of the Falcon rotator, which has a back focus consumption of 15.2 millimeters versus the 19 on this first version here, I would simply just add the spacers that I need in order to meet the back focus requirement. In other words, there's 3.8 millimeters of difference between the first version here and the second version. So I would just add 3.8 millimeters of spacers or whichever spacers that you need to meet your back focus requirements. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. And then drop a comment in the comment section. Are you currently using the Falcon Rotator? If so, what do you think about it? Or what questions do you have? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.